content warning. Did you notice the warning for getting triggered? Hashtag triggered. Um, I'm now all in watching the channel and not browsing Reddit. <laughs> so <laughs> this is the letter, and uh, it's a visual novel game that kind of takes some inspiration from... I think it kind of takes some inspiration from Until Dawn. Uh, uh, oh, yeah. This is Fancy Rum, and I'm Neil. And I'm Scott. So, Scott, what what made you want to try this out, at least? I don't know. I was just interested in seeing you play a game in which all of your decisions probably have consequences. And well, having anyone comment on the decisions that you're making is probably going to make it a little more entertaining. Well, unfortunately, the curveball is that since I've basically played through most of this game, um, you're going to be the one making the choices. Ooh, okay, that's good too, because I make terrible choices. So I keep things interesting. Yeah, and so uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but even the start has a little bit of fun. So, are you ready to go? Oh, I do know that there's supposed to be a jump scare right out the gate. Was that it? What? That was <laughs> that was different from the jump scare I had. I apologize for my shitty reading, and I should note that this game doesn't have the best grammar at times, but the Ermengarde Mansion. It was built for Lord William and Lady Elizabeth Ermengarde of Luxburn, humble of ambassadors of peace and beloved by their people. Both were well known for their compassion and generosity, never failing to extend a helping hand to anyone in need. Under their influence and wealth, what was once a sleepy village grew to a prosperous and bustling town. However, the seasons of joy eventually ended when the good nobles perished at the hand of a great plague. Their riches and legacy were hen henceforth passed on to their only child, Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. Dot, dot, dot. Ellipse. Ellipse, yeah. The mansion has stood since the, night, uh, since the 1620s, a witness to a very long history of joy and pain. After Lady Charlotte committed suicide, the great house was eventually left uninhabited. And that is when it began. Surrounding villagers spoke of seeing and hearing unearthly things, of cries and howls that filled the nights and hearsay of a mysterious woman roaming the halls, the hallowed halls aimlessly. People who dared enter its walls were simply never heard from again. Even after 400 years, these stories remain much like the house itself. Whispers. Wait, 400 years? Does that mean that we're at 2020? <laughs> Wait, 1620? 400, 400 years? 400 years? 20, yeah. 2020. Right around that. They still don't have solar panels installed. What the hell? Hey, man, ghosts don't care about being uh, green. Yeah, well. Whispers about the once great house, its legend and its curse, still fall upon the villagers' ears. In spite of this, the current owners are convinced that these stories are nothing more than a hoax. With little regard for the truth, they had Briar Realtor Com uh, Corporation place the property back on sale. Like Pandora's box, the secrets that lie inside await to be discovered by brave souls. No matter what happens, take care not to be consumed by the curse. Ellipses. Good Wait. luck. Quick question for yeah. you. Are we people who are like touring the house to purchase it? Well... It certainly seems like that's more speaking to the player. Because as soon as we Hello? get the game started... Isabella! Are you there? Where are you? A familiar jittery voice comes from the other end. Oh, hey Rose! I'm at St. Goretti High. What's the matter? So as you notice here, our character... This is our character? Yep, that's who we're playing as. And uh, it's no spoiler or anything to see that the game takes place over seven chapters. We can't highlight anyone else at this point, but immediately from the get-go, we have a relationship meter for the other six characters. Except Rose isn't one of them. That's an astute observation. Wait, so what, what do, do we do mean, now? What's the matter? Oh, okay. Sorry, what was that? Oh, I was curious what we do to progress the dialogue further. Oh, yeah. It, 
It's it's not set to automatic. I don't even know if there is like an automatic mode in here. Ah, doesn't look like it. It's a mansion, silly. I'm here and you're late. Jeez, we're on shift together. You promised. Oh my god, please don't tell me you forgot. You were planning on leaving me to check this place out on my own, weren't you? You chickened out! Yikes. Calm down. Are we real you know I take my promises seriously. I'd like to believe that. So hurry up and get here. This place is huge. A bit too quiet since no one's lived here since, like, forever, but beautiful nonetheless. Why are you so surprised? This isn't the first time you've been there. I know. I just wish I could live in a place like this. It really takes my breath away. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Not after the rumors that say it's haunted. Jeez, never mind those rumors. Ghosts aren't real after all. And even if they are, which they are not, they can't do anything. They're nothing but spirits. You don't know that! They might be listening or watching right now, and they might not be happy with you enough to curse you. We're no scared offense, cats. Sweetie, but that's a bit of a stretch. It's funny that you use that name, by the way. Uh, believe it or not, it's better to be careful. Right. You know, not every property we sell will end up with a dead body stuffed in a sofa. <laughs> and I think that mansion is where we'll likely find another one. I can feel it. That was one time, Isabella! Loosen up! Wait, just get here ASAP, please. I'm getting bored being here on my own. Fine, fine. Let me just finish up here. I'll be right there soon. Okay, see you. Bye. She hangs up before I can respond. Rose, still charming as ever. And who was that? So you're going to notice right away here, the character models in this game are, at least when you don't have the portraits that are located in your bot, uh, lower left, they're like these animated 2D style things that kind of remind me of like elaborate flash drawings, if you will. Yeah, that's a good characterization. Uh, and they I, definitely have the very uh, shiny, beady anime eyes too. Oh yes, totally. And uh, actually, I want to see if we have anything in our... Oh, you know what? Yeah, our profile. We Wait, can go over what's that. my name? Maria Isabella Grace Cruz Santos. How does it feel to be a woman finally, Scott? Even though I have an incredibly long name, it's not that bad. <laughs> you were born May 28th. You're 26 years old. You're only 5'2", an estate agent. Filipino, Roman Catholic, and you are a fine arts undergraduate. You like cinnamon rolls, dogs, food, police procedural dramas, and uh, actually, I don't know what that is. Teleseries? Teleseries? Yeah. So This must have been made by some Brits, huh? It was actually made by a Filipino company, but it takes huh. place in the UK. Okay. So you're going to notice with uh, certain spellings as well, or certain words are spelled like proper English as opposed to that bastardized American bullcrap. I kind of do like the proper English. Like G-R-E-Y versus G-R-A-Y. Eh. Eh. <laughs> Soon we you're going to start spelling skeptical with a C instead of a K. Mm. Uh, she's the third child among seven, daughter of a laundry woman and a, a jeepney driver. She went to a public school and was an average student, but took to art easily. Uh, you know what? It's there for people to read. Close. Yeah, they can always pause the video to read it, too. I look up from my phone to see Rebecca. Becca, giving me a questioning look. Oh, that? It's just Rose. Rose? The one you said who trained you for your job Ooh, after you started? That pretty interesting. You're working together again? She has ghost arms. Just yeah, for this know, property. We've been scoping out that big mansion down reality. Anselm Village after the renovations. Today is sort of its grand opening to the public. The RC wants to give it one last check before we let potential buyers tour it this afternoon. Wait, mansion? That big spooky one you've been telling everyone about? Didn't you keep saying how it just gave you the creeps? Uh, 
No, it's yeah, not haunted. <laughs> you actually went there? And you're going back? See, this person watches scary movies. They know the drill. Yeah. Well, I did promise Rose I wouldn't ditch her. And besides, a job is a job. Gotta do what you gotta do to make a living. <laughs> as soon as those words leave my mouth, Becca lets out a soft chuckle. What's so funny? I still want to know why we're in a high school building. Yeah, it, that's exactly... That was exactly my confusion, too. Nothing! It's just that I didn't expect you to say that. Coming from you, it sounds so... out of character. I mean, no offense, but you've been freaking out about the place being creepy ever since you got assigned to it. Cursed rumors and all. I honestly thought you'd back out. Not all the time. I could really use a huge amount of cash right now, and this is just the fastest way to get it. Uh-oh, I've listen got to loan this. sharks on Briar my tail. Reality wants it sold as soon as possible, and the <laughs> agent who sharks. lands the deal is going to get a huge bonus. A huge bonus. This is. There's no way this could go wrong. They never give bonuses like that. Getting that would make life so much easier. They're desperate. I'm desperate. It's perfect. <laughs> that's my <laughs> that's my train of thought. A sympathetic look crosses her face. You know, if you're really in urgent need of money, you could have just asked me. Oh, is Becca rich? Uh, I mean, look at that blouse. Come on, she's loaded. <laughs> or Ashton. We can always let you borrow, and you can pay us back whenever. I'm too proud for this. I have to keep myself from groaning out loud. In the years I've known her, I can already tell what to expect once she has that expression. Becca! I've noticed that you've been living off instant noodles these past few weeks. <laughs> she crosses her arms and grimaces at the thought. Her voice slightly raises as she begins to scold me. Instantly, I'm reminded why Becca excels at teaching boisterous teenagers. Oh, Stop okay. eating junk! They're cheap, but they're not good for you. You'll definitely end up in the hospital if you keep at it. When's the last time somebody ate too much ramen and ended up in the hospital? There was some Asian woman that, uh, Asian, maybe woman is a little old for, or that, that carries like a, a weight, an age that does not pertain to this girl, but someone in i think korea or japan was eating ramen for like a month or two straight and she was extremely malnourished mm. yeah need to add some soylent to the diet so scott what are we going to say uh well i don't i don't see a reason to start a fight just yet so i eat other things too hey i eat other things too oh relationship that was a good choice if you're going down the Rebecca route. Wait, are you saying that I've got to make sacrifices to go down other routes? Not necessarily. Uh, so in this case, the white lines represent what you start at, at, at the start of the game, if you will. And you mm. just gain some Rebecca levels there. I just got some Rebecca. Yep. You're, you're pretty right. full on the Rebecca. You don't have much Hana or Luke, though. I fold my arms across my chest, mimicking her posture and giving her the best frown I can muster. The same one I'd use with my younger siblings when they were being difficult. Instead, she only raises an eyebrow at me. That's not going to work on me. And I saw it when you were cleaning your flat last week. The instant noodle cups outnumber everything else. Why are you lying, Scott? <laughs> I just eat a lot of noodles at once. That's the only reason there's so many. You're just exaggerating. Did you even see what's in my cupboard yet? I'm fancy not ramen just ramen. living on instant noodles oh, alone. Yes, fancy I've ramen. got canned beans, peas, tuna, ham, and even hamburgers in there. Ew, in my cupboard? <laughs> That's not good. Hamburgers. <laughs> oh, her eyes. <laughs> Becca's wrinkling her nose by the time I get to the end of the small list. She even went a little green on the last one. I did too. <laughs> is that is that blood right there? Do you see that? <laughs> I would have laughed a little at that if I didn't know it would only lead to more reprimands from her. Aren't those the same ones you won from the grocer's raffle more than a year ago? Oh, gross. <laughs> it's become its own culture. 
Oh, I sincerely hope you're checking the date stamps on those things before eating them. <laughs> I don't want a repeat of last year. What happened last year? In I get food case, poisoning? Those are still not exactly healthier choices, Belle. She shakes her head, possibly laughing at some funny distant memory. It's probably when, me shitting myself last year. <laughs> when she looks up, I immediately brace myself. More words from her. Sometimes it's just better to let Becca talk until she's out of things to say. That sounds really annoying. <laughs> but when she turns her attention back to me, there is only warmth in her smile. <sighs> what am I going to do with you? She says this more to herself than me, her voice shifting to something kinder, even motherly, if I'm looking for the exact word. I hope you know that it's impossible not to worry about you when mother. you're like this. <laughs> you don't have to keep eating the same thing. I already told you before, you're always free to reheat food in my fridge. Thanks, Becca. Wait, how do I reheat food I really appreciate it, but you don't need to keep bathing me. Right, is there a built-in <laughs> microwave in that fridge <laughs> that just heats things up to a dangerous temperature? My parents have a fridge that actually makes hot water. It's It makes no sense to me. Really? Yeah, I mean, I understand how you do it mechanically the fridge, but it just seems so pointless. You've been taking care of me since after I moved here. You have to take a break sometime. And before you ask again, no. You know I'm not a fan of borrowing money. And I'm not going to ask you to give me what you earned hard for yourself. Ugh, you and your pride. But suit yourself. The offer stays on the table, though. I nod in response, if only to get her to drop the topic. But I'm pretty certain I will never take that offer. Ever. It has nothing pretty to certain. do with pride. I've simply seen plenty of times how friendships can take a turn for the worse just because of a few unpaid debts. A few unpaid debts, not a big deal. Yeah, that sounds pretty <laughs> bad when there's more than one. <laughs> I don't want something like that to happen between me and Becca. We may argue about a lot of small, petty things, but she already feels like a real sister to me. I don't want to lose that friendship over something so trivial. Becca's movements, when she takes a quick glance at something behind me, snaps me out of my thoughts. Well, enough chit-chat. Lunch is ending, and my students will be back any minute. We can catch up later. Good luck with your clients. You better treat us to lunch or something if you get that sale. I'm gonna go you beat bet. up one of these high schoolers for their lunch money. Yeah, she's desperate for money. <laughs> With a small smile, she returns to her desk and begins sifting through the papers of a rather thick history book. She's probably working on next week's lesson plan. Or trying, at least. Her eyes are distant, and she doesn't seem too attentive to whatever is on the page. <coughs> As if she heard my thoughts, Becca starts coughing heavily. Her hands hastily goes, over, goes to her mouth to stifle the sounds. Maybe she's sick. Oh, no. Ah, uh, this is precisely why I followed her here. For, some re uh, for someone who makes a habit out of worrying about other people, Becca sure forgets how to take care of herself. Hey, you sure you can manage on your own? Either that, or she's really embarrassed. Hmm. I mean, you're still a bit feverish. It it's not what it looks like, senpai. Oh, hush, dear. <laughs> Don't you worry about me. I'll just drink some medicine and I'll be right as rain. Terrible. I level her with a flat look. She has had a cold for a couple days now, something about the, uh, the strange weather not agreeing with her lately. And despite my advice to take the, the week off and rest, I found her apartment empty when I dropped by this morning. Oh, she can just go into her apartment? Yeah, apparently. She even left the medicine her doctor prescribed. Look who's being stubborn now. You shouldn't even be working right now. If it's not obvious, they're like flatmates, or not flatmates, I guess, but they're neighbors. Mm. <laughs> Seriously, you big baby. I'll be fine. For now, just go to work and stop making that Rose girl wait for you. Yeah, this is all happening while she's supposed to be at work. Yeah. I'll call you if I still feel bad. And you can come pick me up if it makes you feel any better. She offers me a reassuring smile and I can only sigh. Why do I even bother? <laughs> there is no stopping her once she has decided on something. Defeated, I reach inside my bag to pull out the same <laughs> bottle of medicine she left earlier. She looks at it warily when I place it in front of her. Unfortunately for her, this is the one thing I'm not letting her have her way. All right, but don't forget what the doctor said. Drink this on time. If it's too late, it doesn't work. I'll see you <laughs> later, okay? Plus it's cherry flavor. 
There's an amused gleam in her eyes when she shifts them back to, uh, back to me. <laughs> Look who's playing the mother hen now. Oh. Rebecca. She ruined <laughs> okay, our relationship. Okay, okay. I won't tease anymore. I'll make sure to drink it, Mom. Before I can retort, she casts another look at the clock. I take that as a sign to finally end the conversation and my short visit. With a small wave, I leave her alone to her classroom and her thoughts. I hail a passing taxi to take me to the property as soon as I leave the school grounds. The mansion is some ways out in the countryside, but I don't have time giving the driver directions. Oh, um, if you go back to this splash art on the back, if you look to the left, it's Starbucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Apparently everyone in Luxburn City knows of it, including every bit of rumor surrounding the place. In fact, just the mention of its name is enough for locals to give you cautious, sidelong glances. I learned that the hard way the first time I commuted there, and it only boosted my relief that there's something more to the house. Even the news of it being renovated and placed back in the market has caused quite a stir. Thankfully, it died down a few weeks later. The place would have become a lot harder to sell otherwise. I avert my eyes from the window once the buildings shrink in the distance. We get a glimpse of the countryside soon, although a quick glance at my watch tells me we're still a few minutes away from our destination. Might as well get some work done. Rose did ask me to review the mansion's documents. I already looked th uh, them over last night, but you never know when things may go wrong. I bet one of them's gonna contain a letter. Oh, oh, just maybe. Life is always, uh, Life has ways of messing things up like that. Halfway through reading the papers, my phone rings again. I pick it up without looking, neatly tucking it between my ear and shoulder. It's probably just Rose again anyway. Rose? Oh, that's not Rose. Guess again. Oh, it's Ash. Oh, Ash Ketchum, the Pokemon master. Ash. <laughs> Bingo. Hey, what's up? Just checking if you're still cool later this evening. You mean that thing with Zack? Blush. Yeah. He even called in the middle of the night just to remind me. No, don't worry. I didn't forget. I'll be there. Cool. I'll see you later. What time do you get off? Around 5, 6 p.m.? I don't know. It's the first day of the Ermengarde Mansion's open house, and we're expecting quite a number of potential buyers. I'll be booked the whole afternoon. Ermengarde Mansion? You know, the big Jacobean mansion at Anselm Village? I'm on my way there right now, actually. Did you notice how Jacobean felt like it was spliced in? Yeah, it definitely was. It's like, oh, we need to fix that in post. On your own? Yeah, well, Rose is already there, but yeah. I see. Looks like the scaredy cat finally toughened up. <laughs> ah, yeah. Shut up! Ash chuckles, and I can't help but roll my eyes upon hearing it. <laughs> I'll see you later. Drop me a call when you're done. I'll <laughs> see if I can pick you up. Yeah, there, there's a lot of charm that the, the developers have put into this game, and part of it is that the depending on who you play as, sometimes they change people's names in the dialogue. That's great. Whatever. Bye. Stupid asshole. Always teasing me whenever he sees a chance. I'll show him who's tough. It takes a few more minutes until I finally reach the infamous mansion. I have to admit, the entire property does look wonderful from the outside. If it's not already obvious, there's a lot of fucking narrative and dialogue in this game. This mansion looks a lot better than it did in the beginning. You know what? Sure as hell. Did it look run down before? I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah it looked run down and uh, decrepit. Yet despite Purple. all of this, it does nothing to hide that something is just wrong. The surrounding area is unusually silent, and, the only rust and only the rustling of the leaves can be heard as the occasional breeze passes. While I answer the and village... And the uh, perfectly timed flock of birds that just flies over the mansion that constantly fly <laughs> they're circling around they're actually vultures while Anselm Village is just a few miles away everybody keeps their distance on purpose perhaps out of perhaps out of fear the horror of falling under the mansion's curse somehow it makes me feel sad the lack of immediate human presence just makes this place all the more eerie than it has any right to be if it's uncanny in broad daylight, I can't imagine how this place looks at night. Who planning to go inside that place, Missy? The voice nearly makes me jump out of my skin. Without completely taking my eyes away from the house, I give the driver a confused nod. A beat passes while I wait for him to say more, but his only answer is a non-committal hum. 
<laughs> hmm. Belatedly, it occurs to me that he must have been waiting for my payment. I mentally slap myself uh, for spacing out and promptly hand him the fare with an apologetic look. I expected him to leave as soon as I paid, but there's a hesitant expression on him, as if something hasn't been said yet. Is there something wrong? Look, Missy, I'm sure you've heard what the people are telling everyone about that place. Nobody likes to be disturbed when they're at peace, and I'm pretty sure whatever they say is in that house doesn't want to either. I admit they did a good job fixing it up, but there must have been a reason why even distant relatives of the family who used to own the house never lived in there despite inheriting it. No wonder they wanted to get rid of it. M maybe they just didn't like it? You never know. That's some good spin on my part. He drives off after, but what he said has left a foreboding feeling in my gut. I breathe out a heavy sigh as I approach the house. After hearing enough of the rumors, I should have expected the conversation to take that turn. But I'm already here. Backing out is completely out of the question. It's not like I have a choice, anyway. If I want to get that bonus and commission, one way or another, I've got to sell this property. The door is ajar when I get to it, however, while my own copy of the keys dangle uselessly in my hands. See, that's kind of like some weird writing you occasionally run into. Yeah. Rose must have left it open when she arrived. That's weird. We may be the only per uh, people here this early, but I've never known her to, as someone careless. I wonder if she's dead by the time we get there. Or at least gone. It's almost like she's, you know, not important enough. To even be on the relationship list. Entering. Not important enough or gone? <laughs> Entering, what greets me inside leaves me gaping. Wait, gaping? <laughs> gaping. I, I'm sorry, my mind is... is. <laughs> They've cleaned every corner, waxed the floor, dusted the antiques, searched every nook, cranny, and crevice, and made it spick and span. All for the sake of making the mansion more enticing to the modern-day lords and ladies. But no matter how hard they try, the mansion still looks as soulless as ever. Until it gets Rose's soul. As though it's going to eat you alive. If you ask me, they should have just listened to what other people have been telling them and leave this place alone. And left this place alone? Sorry. Some things in this world are better left alone, never to be disturbed ever again. Rose? Rose? I call out. Rose, I'm here. I'm here. Where are you? Where are you? My voice echoes softly throughout the hallways. Oh, who am I kidding? In a place this big, I don't think she'll hear me no matter how deafening the silence is. She could be all the way on the other side of the property for all I know. Quickly, I reach for my phone and dial her number. Voicemail. But... The number you have dialed has not been recognized. Oh. Please check and try again. What do you mean has not been recognized? We were just talking a while ago. Rose has disappeared from the face of the earth. It's not like she was eaten by the house, right? Okay, there's a lot of foreshadowing that someone's getting eaten. There, Yeah, there's a lot of foreshadowing in general. Some, or maybe the ghosts did hear us talking and spirited her away, right? Right? No, Isabella, <laughs> don't be ridiculous. She probably just wandered deeper into the house and lost signal or something. I dial her number again, hoping the call will connect this time. The number dialed has not been recognized please check and try again C can i have my phone play an eerie hiss like that too but to no avail oh boy i have a very bad feeling about this rose if you can hear me please come out come on rose this isn't funny you know this place gives me the creeps no answer this isn't going to work the place is big. She could be anywhere. I need to start looking for her. I take a deep breath before venturing deeper into the mansion. Taking a couple of steps forward, I notice something move above the grand staircase. What the hell? Rose? Rose, is that you? Not funny. I'm leaving you if you don't come out. Not coming out, huh? Fine. I'm going. Okay, that's a lie. She's my friend. I can't really leave until I know she's all right. Growing desperate, I try to contact her number one more time. Sorry, Damn, I'm this house is calling my bluff. 
Growing desperate, I try to contact her number again. Come on, please, give me something. Please, Lord. Lord the musician. <laughs> yes, finally. Hello? Hello? Rose, I'm here at the mansion. Where the hell are you? She doesn't respond. There's only a heavy static coming from her side. Much like the Fancy Roman podcast. I sincerely <laughs> hope it doesn't get cut off again before I can get an answer from her. Rose, come on. Where are you? A few moments pass until the static eventually starts to quiet down. I'm... What she really meant to say was, I'm static. That's what I thought. What? The attic? Why? Crap. It got cut off. What was that groaning noise? I, I, don't, I don't know what you were talking about. <laughs> Man, do I really need to go there? With how deep inside the mansion the attic is, there's barely any signal there. No wonder I can't contact her. But why is she there? Out of all places, she just has to make me go fetch her in the creepiest room of this place. Is she doing this to get back at me for being late? My first day as a girl is not going well. First you're late on the job? Whatever, I'll just go. Now you're getting scared by ghosts? The sooner I meet up with her, the sooner I'll feel better about being here. I carefully make my way up the stairs. My legs wobble as I mentally curse the fact that I've chosen real estate instead of picking a career that doesn't involve strange, abandoned houses. Upon reaching the top, the grand hallway greets me. Hello. It branches out to the two major wings of the mansion, the east wing and the west wing. There are two attics here, one on each side. Wait, that doesn't make sense when I think about that. Whatever. But the east one has been converted to a storage room of sorts, and somehow I find it uh, least likely for Rose to wander there by herself. Besides, she never did like going into stuffy storage rooms. So I head towards the west wing first, where a simple wooden door at the end of the hall opens to a small room. Inside is another set of steps leading to the second attic. Unlike the grand staircase though, the stairs to the attic are steep and narrow, made of old stones and covered with a thick coating of dust that kicks up into the air with every step. Thank god it's still daytime. And if it wasn't for the light streaming through the door behind me, I might easily stumble and fall. With how old the place is, there are no light fixtures to illuminate the cramped passages up. Why, they didn't bother to add one here when they, re uh, when they renovated escapes me. Sheesh, they did it with the rest of the house. A small bedroom welcomes me at the end. It looks exactly as it did since the last time I've been here. Full of dust, worn out, and faded by time. Odd, I thought they cleaned everything. Did the crew miss this room? Ugh. Cleanliness is the least of my concerns right now. The more pressing matter is Rose. She's not here. Was I dreaming when I talked to her a while ago? Did I mishear her? No, no, it couldn't have been a dream. After all, the creepy ambience of this estate is doing such a remarkable job of making sure I stay alert and awake. And I'm sure she said she's here. Is this a prank? Or maybe that phone call was Rose's last message to me before the curse got to her. Oh, it's probably shut up, two. Brain. You were not helping. Don't make this scarier than it already is. But if she's not here, then where is she? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Did I get you? No. Um, <laughs> it was more just like that sounded like it was bad. What the hell was that? That's it. I can't do this anymore. I'm leaving. We must have angered the spirits living here. What is this, like an Indian burial ground? I knew disturbing mm -hmm. this mansion was a bad idea right from the very start. But nobody listened. Be fucking realistic, they said. They think <laughs> I'm cuckoo because I believe in curses and ghosts and all that. Me and my outlandish backwater country beliefs. I've always strived to be a model employee, but not this time, no. I'm turning back for the sake of my sanity. Briar Realty can find another agent who is more fucking <laughs> realistic to tour our people around this haunted house. Before leaving, I take one last look at the gloomy old room. Just huh? to check. What's this? Uh-oh. My worries about Rose's whereabouts must have caused me to miss it when I first entered the room. But there's clearly something on the floor. Body. 
<laughs> her, her corpse is lying on the ground. <laughs> lying on the ground, just a couple of inches away from my feet. Out of sheer curiosity, I lean down to pick it up. Strange. I don't recall seeing this the last time I was here. A few days back, me and a few other agents inspected the mansion to prepare for today. I had been the last one to look inside the attic and leave, and this certainly hadn't been here before. Someone must have left it in this room since then. Did Rose leave this for me? Was she here a while ago? I couldn't have missed her though, could I? There's only one set of stairs leading to the attic. The letter isn't exactly in pristine condition. In fact, it looks rather ancient. The paper is so thin and rough, I'm worried it'll fall apart it, uh, if I so much as touch it. But with great care, I open it, and what I read shakes me to my core. Half-Life 3 is never releasing. What? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Nothing but the words, help me, fills the page. All of it seemingly written with a crimson-shaded pen. Or blood. I gulp. The same phrase just goes on and on until... Send this to five people. Send it to five people? This is a shitty email chain? Did, did they have email back then? Where else what? I mean, back in 1620 or back in 2020? What? Or else. As quickly as I can, I scan the back of the paper and peek into the envelope to make sh to make sure I'm not missing out on a second page. But there's nothing. No. Oh, please no. I like her scared little character model. Yeah, the the portrait art I think is really well done at times. My hands tremble as dread creeps over me. The room is suddenly getting colder. I need to get out of here. That's what I would think. Folding the paper in half, the sight that greets me next for, uh, has me frozen on the spot. It's Rose. Oh. Rose has athlete's feet. <laughs> A pair of blood-soaked feet enters my field of vision, covered in gaping <laughs> wounds. With skin eaten away to reveal flesh, bone, and all manner of things one isn't meant to see. Look at those toes. I know, right? Like, there, well, there are no nails. It's too much. All of it Ugh. is too much. I want to cry, call for help, but the words catch in my throat. Even my feet won't move, completely paralyzed out of terror. Lord, please help me. Hmm, so we're a scaredy cat. But I can't stand to look at those toes anymore. Let's look up. Oh, if we're going to look up? Yeah. I need to face it. Whoever, whatever these feet belong to, I need to face it. And, and if I'm going to die, if they're going to kill me, at least I'll know what my killer looks like. A cold comfort. So with a deep breath, I summon every ounce of courage I have left in me and shift my gaze upwards. Oh. No. Please, don't hurt me. <laughs> Without thinking, I scramble towards the door. I struggle to open it, but it won't budge to move. Whoops. <laughs> Neil's like, we're, we're redoing this. We're, we're getting away. Why now? Why won't it open now? My heart sinks as reality dawns in. I'm locked in. Locked in with that thing. Let me out! Let I should show her the letter. Lord, then you wouldn't have to send it to five... I only you, have you four would, people yeah, to go. Exactly. It slowly approaches me as I wrench the door knob violently back and forth. Oh god, this is actually harder. Come on, Neil! Ooh. Yes. The door finally swings open and suddenly she's gone. And I couldn't have been happier. I want to point out that was actually kind of hard. Wasting no time, I leap it out the door like and don't it. look back. My feet pound against the floor in rhythm with loud, fast beating of my heart. 
by the time I run past the hallway and find myself atop the grand staircase, my chest feels so tight like it's going to burst. But that's nothing compared to the feeling of hope the sight of the exit gives me. Racing down the stairs, a breathy laugh escapes me and... <laughs> oh no, shoes, I fall down the stairs. My shoe slips and I find myself falling. Until my back hits the ground and pain racks my body. My head grows fuzzy and my vision dims as I fight to stay conscious. Go away. The last thing I see are those feet before all I know is darkness. Alright, are you ready for like the most epic fucking anime intro ever? <laughs> Wait, who's this chump who gets his own? Like, he gets his whole panel. Because he's such a great guy, obviously. I don't know if you ever played some of those old RPGs like Lunar or, uh, like, Vanguard Bandits. No. But this is very much akin to, like, kind of cheesy-ass old RPG opening anime. Oh man, I am I have no idea where this story's going. You thought it was over. 